and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you the performance of these 10-year-old GTX 680s running in SLI in 2022. But before that, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe down below, and thank you for watching. So let's talk about the GTX 680. Now this card is now over 10 years old as it originally came out back in March of 2012. And at that time, this was the king of all, pretty much the best card you could buy for gaming, except only one other, the bigger brother, which is the GTX 690, pretty much the same thing, except two of these cards on one board. But in this video, we're gonna test out these two cards together in SLI mode. And technically speaking, they should perform slightly better in SLI than the GTX 690. Now this card is still pretty powerful and it compares to a GTX 1050 Ti in performance. The only problem is unfortunately a card like this is no longer supported by the Nvidia's latest drivers and that's why you might uh, run into uh, some problems running the latest games. Now forget about SLI as, as I'm sure you're well aware that SLI is not really well supported for majority of games and there's really only a handful that still do uh, work in SLI mode and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now this card specs are as follows. This is the OEM version which has 1536 CUDA cores, 1006 megahertz base clock, 1058 megahertz boost clock and it's two gigabytes of VRAM and 256-bit GDDR5 interface. Now these are the two gigabyte models. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have the four gig versions. Those are really the ideal ones, I think, to get the most performance. But uh, in this video, we'll, we'll have to just use these. Now let's jump into this monster the of a rig that I like to use to test out dual cards when I'm running SLI. It's a perfect system. I'm sure you're well aware you do need an SLI compatible motherboard and they are usually a bit more expensive. So this one is perfect. It's got the perfect spacing and when you do run the SLI, it does run in the 8X mode. That's pretty much the best you could do to get the best results in SLI. So the following specs are the i7-8700K running at five gigahertz and we have 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM running at 3600 megahertz, as well as a really beefy power supply, which you're definitely gonna need when you're testing out two cards, especially power hungry ones like this. We have a Thermaltake 1200 watt gold rated semi-modular power supply, and it really does its job to test out multiple cards, no problem. Also, I have a 512 gigabyte SSD drive as my main drive, and secondary, I have a 250 gigabyte SSD drive there, and as well as another two terabyte additional storage hard drive on the right here, and it is all water-cooled with a 240 millimeter radiator here set up, and a really spacious case. This case is really a beast. It's the Thermal Take Core V71. I really like these big cases still. I know it's kind of old, but in my opinion, it works really good, especially for a setup like this. So the first game is the good old Resident Evil 3 Remake, an excellent game to test out your SLI performance on. With just a small hack, unfortunately, is necessary for this game using the NVIDIA Inspector. Let's take a look at the settings. All the game is going to be 
displayed on 1080p resolution and here we go 1080p we're like on the medium settings I could say I don't really don't want to go too far on the 2 gigabyte VRAM restriction here now you could go higher than that but unfortunately uh, certain areas are going to stutter and not going to be too enjoyable but these are the kind of settings we're looking at here which is a pretty good visuals and all and you are going to have to be using DirectX 11 to make this work Opa, there you go uh, you can see both the GPUs are being utilized and top being pretty hot right there but that's pretty much normal for these old cards uh, especially the blower style ones so get the uh, better versions with better cooling I'm sure will be good too but it's not bad either so you can see we're getting pretty good FPS here that's for sure and again you could increase the settings and visuals but if you want to stay at good overall performance to quality, you like you want to stay at that two gig VRAM restriction area, so the gameplay is smooth. Unfortunately, Resident Evil Village is not at this point. I've tried already with the hacks uh, to get it to work in SLI. It does not. One of the reasons being that it's not supported by DirectX 11. See, with DirectX 11, you could still play around and get it to work somehow with the NVIDIA Inspector, but this seems like the, uh, the cutoff. Resident Evil 3 Remake, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the new one, with 4, if they're going to make it more DirectX 11 friendly, we'll see. Alright, so that concludes it for this game, let's jump into the next one. Alright, so what we got here is Far Cry New Dawn, uh, this game actually supports SLI natively. And uh, let's take a look at the settings here. Now, of course, key to uh, SLI also is to have the right settings for it to work properly. So in this case, again, we're on 1080p resolution and the quality I'm choosing is high here. It's just right. And uh, to get those cards working and get pretty decent FPS. So let's take a look what we got here. All right, very good. Opa. Starting off right with the action. Not bad for two old cars, huh? Oh yes. And I did mention before, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like and the bell notification, that way you can stay tuned to my latest videos. That's very important guys to hit that bell notification and especially on your YouTube app. That way every time something new comes up, you get a nice little message and you're good to go. Remember, I make this video for everyone here with these old graphics cards and old hardware because soon these things are going to be harder and harder to find, especially in working order. It really is quite interesting to see what these old cards could do.
and yes you could play this on ultra settings too but I wanted to keep it a little bit smoother there you go there's everybody all right that wraps it up for this game let's jump into the next one now Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another natively supported SLI game uh, there's really not many left out there and this is one of them so if you ever have two RTX 390s, the top dogs, and you want to really test out the, the power of SLI, this is the game to do it. So let's take a look at the settings. Okay, so we're like on normal preset here with a little couple of adjustments. And 1080p, P sync off, full screen. There you go. Visuals are pretty good, but of course you're not going to expect extremely high FPS. This game was already a bit harder to run than the previous one, but nevertheless you can see it's running smooth. Both the GPUs are really being utilized, we're going to 98, 99%. That's where you want it. This is the cream of the crop. This is what it's all about. Very smooth. And this is like one of the rare ones where you do have to run in DirectX 12 for the SLI to work. Although I remember the Rise of the Tomb Raider, you could run both 11 and 12 DirectX and get the SLI to work. That's right. Oh, wow. All right, there's just one last game left to test out, so stay tuned for that. And finally, the last game that I'm going to test out in this video is GTA 5, probably one of the best SLI supported games natively. A game really done right and as you know this game has pretty impressive graphics especially for its time so let's take a look at the settings and actually one cool thing and I think this is the only one game that does that it actually comes combines your VRAM together and always gives you the total so in this case 2 plus 2 is 4 gigs of VRAM up to that of course I have the uh, the limiter off that way I can pass that and I'm running almost at five gigs here but um, nevertheless it is quite impressive and uh, as you can see 1080p full screen and pretty much I have the settings maxed out here you could really max this game out with these two cards no problem even going to higher resolution as well but we're gonna just run it with this just to show you how well it runs oh yeah look at that that is nice really smooth again you can see both the GPUs are utilizing in the, in the mid to high 90s that's where you want to be I mean really fantastic this game was always running so good in SLI I'm telling you you could even run this game in 4k with these two cards You know what I'm oh yeah I don't have the setting ready but I'm actually I might jump into the 1440p as well and just to see how that looks leaving the same um, settings which is a uh, very high in ultra 
it really shows you that if the developers wanted to they could make a, a lot of the games SLI compatible because it really does work well when it does but I guess they'll never do that because then people will rock these old cards for like 10 years <laughs> and they don't want that to happen because they're constantly making new graphics cards every year every new every year new series new series spend more money and more money all right you know what let's give it a shot before I end this video let's jump into the 1440p setting because this monitor is actually natively um, supported in uh, let me see 1440p let's see if I get that option Let's see. Yep, there it is. Okay, very good. And again, we're keeping the same old settings. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. I'm sure you notice the difference here now. Now, of course, you notice I'm cam I'm recording it with the camera here, the monitor. Uh, that's because I'm not going to get the same performance if I try to use the uh, shadow play. And, you know, it does give you uh, some problems when you're running stuff in SLI or with a hack. Uh, it might not even work. Uh, in some cases, I had troubles with that. So, you definitely make sense to record with camera the screen because you're just not going to be able to see the full potential here yeah you see and again we're averaging you know over 100 FPS here let me get into a car let's see how it looks while we're driving oh yeah oh yeah look at that pretty solid we're not even, oh boy, I'm going through the crowd, I don't want to go there. It's, uh, that really shows you that these two cards are very capable, and, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to play, even with one of these cards, a lot of the new and modern games. Uh, for instance, uh, what did I try before? Uh, Resident Evil 8, wouldn't even start with this because it just needs the newer technology. I know it would be able to handle it, but the drivers no longer support. And same thing with like, what was that, another one? Halo Infinite and many other games. Very disappointing. All right, well, this is PC Tech Review 101. I'm checking out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.